Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and uh, today we're gonna do another Tech Tuesday. I have been driving a little bit here in Land Rover and we had some rainy season down here as well and suddenly one day when uh, I came out I had some problems with uh, the firing order on the <laughs> engine and it seems to me like the ECU is throwing out uh, random codes including different fire mechanisms and misfires on different uh, cylinders and it doesn't really have a red thread in on the same and it doesn't seem to be consistent on the same thing either so sometimes it's still number four then it's five then it's six then it could be a random firing or a lot of misfiring on during the startup and whatever and since i have more or less already changed all the uh, spark plugs and everything else and also the uh, electrodes going there and the coils i don't think that's where my problem is i recently had the um, tcm module out and i saw there was water in it and i have a suspicion i might have some water or something is actually creating the problem up in the ECU instead. So today I'm going to take the ECU out and change that and see how that looks like inside. So stay with me and uh, I'll see and show you where it is. So if you haven't already done it yet, uh, please like it to uh, like and subscribe and uh, then I'll come back with another video whenever I can. So let's get started. As you can see here, here's the uh, Indian room or the Indian compartment for the Land Rover and uh, engines over here it's all wrapped up right still it's all plastic but doesn't matter you got the firing order and all the cylinders on top which is fine you got the battery casing over here boost box underneath everything's locked up here as well so it's kind of watertight or at least it's uh, secured for water however as you see there's a hole up there as well it doesn't really matter in this case because it runs outside the engine compartment so somehow the water finds its way up in that corner probably through the vending system here below or somewhere else but that's uh, what we're going to go ahead and have a look at today so i'm going to dismount the battery get into the plugs in there and then we'll have a look how it looks underneath so here we are taking the top part of the uh, cover off and uh, we're going in behind the battery here and we're going to take out the plugs in here and hopefully i can get the whole unit out uh, we'll see here in a second how it looks like hopefully it's going to work out quite well but it's in here that it's located now to get the ECU out, it takes a little bit of time, or ECM, whatever, in control, a uh, computer. Uh, now, look at this, I just took the battery out, of course. I took the TCM module, is here, and that's the one I've been modifying before. As you can see, I've already made that watertight, so that should be absolutely fine. That's sitting in front of this. Once you come in and you tip it out, there's like two 5.5 millimeter bolts taken care of uh, in the sides. Then this is your ECU. Check your... Uh, connectors, this is the ECU connector number one, and on mine, on this side, you can actually see there's been water coming down over there, where my finger is pointing, and then the other one has a little bit as well. So now it's interesting to see what's inside of the ECU itself here. You can see there's a lot of dust coming down here as well, so it could be some water coming in. So let's have a look when we get this thing out. Well, welcome to the test bench. Here's the ECU from the Land Rover LR3, uh, five, uh, sorry, um, the eight cylinder 4.4 liter and initially it looks actually pretty well as you can see but here are all the connectors and here's the back side looks very nice as well but if you look very very careful on the side you can actually see there's a slight corrosion change towards the side here and if you look very very closely down here you'll see there's been water penetrating on the side here as well and probably gone in in between here as well i don't know yet but we'll see there's like four screws that you need to take out this one that one and there's one down here and one down here and then we'll take it out make sure you ground yourself or actually touch the table before you take this off because there are computers inside and they are sensitive so do not destroy it but these four let's take them out and see what happens inside Here's your part of the Land Rover and now it's time to have a look, a very close look on what's going on. Well as you can see I've been running through it all and I took it all apart here as well. What I have seen though I found is actually those four screws that is kept uh, the whole thing, the whole box uh, together. It also creates the ground connections to the whole computer unit 
uh, it has another one here in the middle and that thing is actually missing in mine. I think somebody might have been in here before, before me, uh, and that might be the reason. So I'm trying to make a fix on that one. And the reason how I found it as well was also because when I took it apart, I'm like, why is the hole there? But I actually used uh, my phone to magnify every single connector as we came along. That way you can see if there's any water that actually penetrated the box um, that might have come in without your notice. And um, of course, at some point I end over at the ground connection over there and that's missing. So are we gonna fix that as well? Now, if we look at the picture right here, which you can see, I'm gonna put that, take a picture of it as well. So you can see it on the uh, video. You'll see there's a lot of corrosion that actually formed right on this part right here. And um, that is of course water that in time has come in. I don't think it has come in completely here, so I don't think that's the case, but I can see it's been going through more than halfway through in the aluminum casing here. So uh, it could be that it has been having a droplet in there, but I don't think that's the uh, major issue now. So for now, I'll leave this as it is. I'll connect that ground connector that is missing here in the uh, middle. And I'm gonna do that with this little screw here. You could put a small washer on to make sure you have ground connection on top as well because it's a double sided circuit. So the board itself has connectors on both top and ground and bottom. And um, that might be a good idea. So uh, let's fix this for that purpose. I'm taking a little bit of a washer here, as you can see, and I'm gonna put that together and make sure that it doesn't short circuit anything else in there, only the ground part and then it should be fixed. So uh, let's get this assembled again. Well, I grind this little washer out with uh, <laughs> a small drill and then it has a little bit of funny shape, but that's on purpose. So it doesn't touch anything else in here, except where it's supposed to touch, in right in the middle here, like that. And then by putting in the screw now on top of it, I should assure that I got a ground connection in the middle of the print board uh, or the circuit board on the whole computer. So now it's ready to be uh, assembled again and let's put it back in the car. Like on the previous video with the module, I just cleaned it up as you can see, sprayed it with some silicone, got most of the uh, corrosion away here as well. However, this is where the water comes down and uh, since I already know that this is where the weak point is, what my intentions are now is to go ahead and use a little bit of isolation tape and I'll make this uh, watertight at least along the edges here where it could come into the computer. So on top of that I cleaned all the plugs out as you can see in here as well and um, there were a little bit of uh, corrosion dirt in there as well. So now this should be grounded through the middle, through the sides, should be proof for any um, cellular phones and so forth as well and hopefully in a second it's going to be watertight. So I'm going to put it back up again where it was and then we can see how it looks like. Now it's all sealed, sealed up with uh, electronic tape so now it can rain it can uh, be pressure washed again because it might have been myself who knows but at least it this should be uh, quite fine it's eliminating some of the other issues i've had with the car so uh, let's go ahead and put it back in the car so here we are back in the ending compartments and uh, now we just need to get all these back in again in of course reverse order there are some screws in here you need to take care of that you all have and uh, if you look carefully on this one here, when you take it out, you can see that the water has been dripping down there, running in right on here. And that's where that line is. So it comes down to this part, as you can see very, very closely. It's very easy to see. So the water has been imminent. There's definitely evidence that it's been something here. So uh, now it's just a matter of getting this back in and uh, put the ECU back in place. So you can see when you assemble it again, you start with the plus before I put the minus on. I have everything assembled inside there now. It took a little time, but just take your time with it. Don't rush because it's gonna be a bad job you're gonna do in the end. So uh, once you get to this part, it should be uh, pretty simple to continue from here on and, uh, and forward. So let's just go ahead and finish it up and see if we can get this thing running in a second. Here we go, everything is now assembled, the computer is back in. I just need to go ahead and put the rest back up here again and then we can go take it out for a little spin and see if it actually does work. So uh, hopefully that's gonna help you a little bit and let's see how that drives. 
I just finished the uh, computer uh, repair and found out what it was and I just put on some power. The CD changer has just gone through all the system checks and everything else. Same thing here in the um, in the car. So I just put the ignition on and this is what I got. I got the bonnet open of course. Let's see if it will start. It starts up absolutely beautiful and uh, it runs really nice as well. So. I think we can say this has actually been fixed and that's the end of the video basically. So right now I'm gonna go out and go for a test drive and see how that works. So uh, right now everything should be all up to standards. The uh, ECU should have its ground and everything else so it doesn't throw out these multiple codes anymore and uh, so far it's running absolutely beautiful. As you can see here the uh, dashboard is completely without any lights except for I don't have my seatbelt on but I'll get that in a second. It runs so smooth and uh, there is absolutely nothing, no misfiring, no fault codes, no nothing coming up. So I think that will be uh, the end of um, this ECM ECU uh, re, let's say refurbishing part. Anyway, it takes a little bit of time. It took me about uh, an hour and a half to get everything sorted out and you have to have good time with it otherwise you're gonna be in trouble with some other things so if you do like to go ahead and take this apart make sure you can finish it and make sure you don't destroy the ECU they're quite costly if you need to get them fixed so far it's running nicely so uh, for now it's just time to say bye for this time I'll do like a tree and leave and I hope you have fun with Land Rovers out there I do and uh, now it's time to go ahead and enjoy it again see you later bye bye